Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Hoffman. I'm a software engineer, a security researcher, and a technical author based out of the Pacific Northwest. Today, I'm here to talk to you about command injection attacks. So if you go to Wikipedia and you look up command injection, you'll be redirected to the code injection page, as you can see here. And it'll give you this brief overview. It'll say that code injection is basically the exploitation of a computer bug. By that, it means vulnerability in which the attacker is able to inject code and change the course of execution. So why is this page on code injection rather than being on command injection? Well, injection style attacks are just one of many uh, archetypes of attack. So you may have heard of SQL injection, cross-site scripting in some of my past videos. You may have also heard of shell injection, which is another name for command injection. So an injection style attack is an attack whereby an attacker is able to inject commands into a command line interface that the developer of that application did not intend for the end user to be able to inject. And those obviously have to be executed as well. Uh, if they're just ignored, then um, the attack is, is not gonna be successful. So command injection, also called shell injection, is named after Unix shells, but applies to most systems. So you can perform command, you can perform command injection and command execution against Windows servers as well. Typically, it, when it's called shell injection, it means command injection against a Unix-based operating system, aka the usage of shell commands against the operating system. And you can see some examples here. You can also see some examples of how you may break out of a legitimate parameter sending to the server. Right here, right here, right here, right here, etc. So imagine you're a uh, the developer of an application. You allow a user to interact with your application through some API over the internet and they can send some data back. That data is turned into a command that runs against your, ex against your operating system, but the end user finds a way to break out of what their allowed commands are and inject their own commands. All of a sudden they have command injection. So in order to demonstrate command injection, we're gonna go to DVWA again, AKA the Damn Vulnerable Web Application. This is a educational uh, application that is intentionally vulnerable. And we're gonna jump to the command injection section. So in this section, there is this application that says ping a device. And so as you can imagine, what's going on here is we're going to be able to ping an IP address. And now this isn't going to be pinged from the browser. We're going to send a request to the server. The server will ping that IP address and it will send us the response back. So let's figure out what the IP address of a website is. So we could do something like ping test.com. And we're doing this on our on our own device. So we see that test.com has a 67.255.146.248 IP address. So we'll go here and we'll do a 67.225.146.248. There we go. We'll submit it. DVWA is going to hit its DVWA web server. So our browser will hit the DVWA web server. The web server will ping this IP address and it will return the response. Now the way this is working on the server is the server is actually just using a ping command. So as you can see here, uh, you know, the server was pinged. There's 56 bytes of data. Um, it looks like we had some packet loss, but that doesn't really matter. So the output of this doesn't matter. What matters is the IP address that we sent as a parameter back to the server via the API was obviously used to tell the DVWA server that it had to run this command, which you know is a shell command. Um, now it, it could be run through a number of ways, but in this case, it's a shell command. So what we wanna do is we wanna see if we can break out of that. So we take this IP address and we assume, we just make the assumption that maybe uh, you know this the string, the IP address is interpreted very literally. So it's injected directly into the, into the string that is gonna be interpreted by the CLI, in this case, the operating system. So let's try something simple like let's echo test. And as we submit this, we'll send another uh, API request to the server, except the payload is now the IP address semicolon echo test. So what we're doing is we're trying to attach an extra command to see if the server will only accept the IP address, or if we can break out of that using the semicolon and attach our own code afterwards. And in this case, obviously we could. So that's command injection in a nutshell. 
effectively command injection occurs most cases it's involving a client and a server aka a browser or mobile application and a web server the web server uses some functionality that is native to the operating system and it uses some parameters from the end user and for some reason the way that the code was written the code is insecure such that the end user can break out of that code and inject their own commands against the web server now obviously this is an extremely dangerous attack because it not only compromises the web server but by nature of being able to compromise the web server you're compromising the accounts of everyone else that uses the web application you're you know potentially compromising any files that the admin had on that web server effectively with command injection in many cases but not all um, the only cases are where there's some type of isolation occurring but in many cases you are effectively giving yourself you know, administrative permissions on that web server and you can do whatever you please so the attack surface area once you've actually found the command injection is very very large so this is a very dangerous attack and um, unfortunately it is still very prevalent just because developers often do not use secure coding principles so that's command injection in a nutshell Thanks for watching.